similar themes in the teachings of Isaiah and Jesus. And we find similar consequences for the people who did not pay attention to the teachings. For to be unfaithful to God brings a dire consequence. Paul knew of this because he had been persecuting Jesus and his followers. And Jesus helped him to come to a conversion experience. And Paul, in embracing that conversion experience, turned his life around and began to minister in the name of Jesus. So tonight in his letter to the Philippians, Paul is in prison and he's facing death. And yet he starts out by saying to them, have no anxiety. Put your prayers and your petitions to God and he'll answer you. And he wants them to know of God's care and God's concern and of his desire to fill them with his peace. Now Paul can speak this way as, as a testimony of his faith, fostered over a long period of time from that conversion experience with many trials and many tribulations, with many challenges and many struggles. But Paul stayed the course. He allowed God to be his leader and his guide. And Paul's experience of God's grace is what spurs him on. It spurs him on to bring the people, to join them with him and bring them along with him. And he says to them, remain faithful no matter what. Never lose sight of God in the midst of struggle or challenge or turmoil or grief or sadness or loss. Always allow the Lord to be with you on that journey. And then Paul begins to chart a course that people can now listen to, take to heart, and begin to form a direction in their own lives. And that is a course that leads to peace. He tells the people, keep on doing what you've heard, learned, and seen in me. And Paul knows firsthand what that is all about. I believe that if we reflect on his teaching, we too can shape a similar experience in formulating a plan for our life and our journey in faith. And that is a plan that will fill us ultimately with God's peace. Now, we all have core values, right? Things that we hold near and dear to us. And what you believe in your heart, you will live in your life. And so I think one of the great core values that this world needs is that of kindness. Because kindness as a core value is one that develops an attitude that simply overflows with positive energy. We are so ready with that positive energy because of kindness. Now, we've all had acts of kindness done for us. And how did we feel after that act of kindness was affected? Well, for me, it was gratitude and thanksgiving that someone thought enough to offer an act of kindness. And so I would imagine that if I were offering that to someone else, those same feelings of gratitude and thanksgiving would be present. And so we can begin this practice each and every day in a very practical way. So I'm going to suggest to you that when you get up in the morning, I want you to take some time and I want you to name three blessings in your life. Name three blessings. And when you're done naming those three blessings, I want you, while you're in the bathroom brushing your teeth, to look in the mirror and look into your own eyes and I want you to name three things that are good about yourself. Three things that are good. And then after that, let's broaden it out and let's name three things about someone else that is good. Could be a family member, could be a friend, could be a coworker, but three things about that person that you deem are good. So what you're really starting out to do is set a tone whereby all throughout the day, you have the opportunity to practice random acts of kindness. I think that's wonderful. 
I think it's exciting because when we're so tuned in to living this way, it becomes a way of life. It's a habit. It's a great habit because it takes everything that's been given to us, that grace that God has, and it's now shared abundantly with others. Random acts of kindness, one that we face every Sunday evening, getting out of the parking lot. <laughs> How many people would stop and let a car in ahead of them to get out of the parking lot? Or is it, I'm getting out of the parking lot and you can get in behind me? Today I use the example, of course, we don't have donuts in the evening, but you go out to hospitality and there's that, that one donut that you've been tasting all through Mass. And, and you're on the way to get it. And you look off to the side and someone else is approaching that donut at the same time. What do you do? Do you let them have the whole donut? Do you grab the donut so that they don't get any? Or do you negotiate and cut it in half? So random acts of kindness are things that are available to us at every turn in life. And now remember, now we heard this in scripture, God promises that if we do our part, Christ will stand guard over our hearts and our minds so that we can have that inner peace. And God promises that the God of peace will be with us. Today we celebrate, we continue to celebrate, the Feast of Francis. Now, Francis was a man of peace. He was a man who lived simply and humbly. A man who was filled with great joy in his life. And a man who wanted to be so connected to Christ that he prayed and he asked God that he might know firsthand what it was like to bear the sufferings that Christ bore. And he was given that opportunity for he was given the stigmata, the five wounds of Christ, the nail marks in his hands, in his feet, and in his side. Now imagine what that was like. You could only take very small steps because your feet hurt so much from having the nails and the open wounds that were constantly bleeding. You could not grasp anything with your hands like you used to because of the nail marks in your hands. And your side was in pain in every movement because of the whole, the five wounds that Jesus had. Francis wanted to know so intimately what that was like, and he was given that. And yet, his, his disposition, his attitude, was always one of gratitude and thanksgiving. And he lived that out as an example. He was mirroring the presence of God, the presence of Christ in his time. And so when we look at that and we begin to reflect and pray on that, what is it for us to reflect the presence of Christ in our time here and now? Everyone wants to experience that inner peace. And it's the promise of Christ that it will be ours if we live in that deep relationship shared with him, follow his teachings, allow him to guide us and lead us on our journey in life, developing that deep spirit and also that abundant grace that only God can give to us. So that's what I want you to think about on this festival of Francis. That's what I want you to put into action tomorrow morning when you get up. And then at the end of the day, step back with gratitude and thanksgiving and see if your day didn't go a little bit better than it might have gone if you hadn't taken the time to put that positive spin, that energy and that attitude out into your relationships. Got it? Got it. Got it. Got it. Good. Amen.